Hello everybody and hello fellow YouTubers and hello fellow students for whoever's actually watching this series. As you notice I am actually creating a series to do with my 2015. Um, these are just pretty much basic lessons um, that I've decided to put together. Uh, I know there's millions and millions of, of YouTube videos out there um, and obviously uh, there are a lot of uh, um, high-end modelers out there that are are doing quite a few videos on creating things but I'm actually finding it quite difficult to find um, pretty basic information um, through YouTube and uh, my students that I teach decided or asked if I could uh, put some videos together to help them learn because I can obviously obviously show them in class and uh, and they learn that way but um, they wanted something um, to work off when they got home so um, I'm putting a few video tutorials together uh, the way how I do them in class, so they're pretty much in order of the way how I teach them. Uh, so hopefully you guys will enjoy the video and, and follow along. Uh, my name is Wayne, as you can see down in the bottom, um, and I, uh, I teach mainly 16 to 19 and obviously at quite low level. So the, these videos are quite low level, so if you're quite used to modeling, maybe it's a good idea to find uh, a, different, a, a different YouTuber to watch. So these are, these are pretty much basic video videos. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move ourselves into the my scene. So we did look at um, basic controls in our last session. Last session, sorry. So we're actually going to look at the extrude tool. Uh, now the extrude tool is pretty much a very um, important tool that we have inside my. It allows us to manipulate an image quite an image a model quite easily. Um, no matter what type of polygon model that we have on our grid, um, we can pretty much manipulate with the extrude tool. So let's get in there um, and let's open up the Maya scene. And as you can see, um, just starting off from the last video, just save the cube as far as we got with our uh, polygon cube. Nothing really much has changed. I haven't changed anything um, grid wise. I haven't changed anything up here in the properties or, or, or anything that um, is on the canvas. So nothing has changed at all. Um, as you can see, if you are new to my videos, I am using a student edition. I am Electra, so um, I am liable to hold. Um, a student account as as a lecturer, so that's not not too bad. Um, however, if you are a student, you can quite easily just jump onto Autodesk's website, grab Maya, um, especially if you're part of an educational faculty. So, as I said, we're actually going to look at um, working with this cube, um, and we're going to extrude parts from the cube, which is going to show us how we select parts of the cube um, to extrude, uh, and we'll look at how we can just make one cube into something completely different by using one tool. So as you can see currently I've just got the cube on screen uh, and I've obviously got my move tool selected here hence why we can see the arrows on my canvas. So we can quite easily just move them around or move the cube wherever you like. On my right hand side underneath my channel box here that we see here um, you can see that it's scale is one to one. The reason why is because I drew it in. Normally, what people, or what we should be doing, is going to polygon primitives, turn off the interactive creation, which will just dump it in. Um, so it will just dump the object in. Not many people like this interactive, uh, interactive creation. I don't like it myself, um, but student-wise and for easy learning, um, it makes a lot more sense. I'll show you the difference. So this is when you got interactive creativity on. Uh, so I got polygon primitives cube or I could just click on the cube here. So basically the interactivity makes me allows me to build my cube um, by a few simple clicks. Um, which is it, it is is quite simplistic in a way um, for some people, uh, hence why I leave that on. If you had to turn that off um, by going to create polygon primitives and turn that interactive interactivity off, notice it just plumps my cube on my grid. Okay, so with a very small scale, now my grid is absolutely massive because we're obviously doing um, modeling work for UDK, so the grid is quite massive um, and the cube's pretty small. Um, and then what I normally do is then we'll just scale it here, so just 250, and we have our cube on our canvas. So either way it works. Um, I, norm I, I prefer it this way without having the interactivity on. Um, so it just plonks right in the center and I can start working with my object. However, some people do like the interactive creation, so um, we can just do it both ways. 
So I said, well, today what we're going to look at is we're actually going to look at extruding an object. Okay, now the extrude tool um, is a tool that has been used throughout the whole of modeling. Um, it's it's pretty much a primitive part of 3D modeling, and it's something that a lot of people should really understand and gather to or, or should know how to use. So I'm going to go through how it works um, and how we use the tool and how we select different areas of the cube um, to extrude and we'll start manipulating the object. Now currently I've got my object in object mode. Okay, So between the two differences, object mode we can see that it's highlighted in green. Once I change out of that, so for example I want to select a face, so like in our first video, you'll notice that it goes to the cyan blue, Okay, which is basically telling me okay I'm in now in, in edit mode and you can now select a face because I chose face. If I chose edge, again we stick with the cyan blue so no change there, but this will allow me to then select an edge of my cube or any object or any polygon shape that I have actually got on my on my grid. I can also choose a vertex which are these pointers here. Okay, so each point of the polygon shape is part of my vertex. You also get a vertex face which pretty much just breaks out the object. Now I've never ever used this in my life and I don't really see the point of it. Um, but it pretty much it'll, it, it pulls the faces out um, so it makes it easier to select each one of these vertexes. Okay, So that's the only reason for it. It just makes your life a little bit more easy instead of having it like that and trying to find that vertex. Especially if you've got quite a few vertexes on the screen. It becomes very difficult to find that um, and to lock down on that vertex that you want to manipulate. So as I said, we're actually going to look at the extrude tool, which is just on our toolbar. So we're going to make sure that polygons is selected in our drop down box just here. And then on our little toolbar here, uh, we need to make sure polygons is selected. Right? So make sure your polygons. Uh, we will look at things like deformation, animation, uh, rendering, and a few more others, surf, not, not surfaces, so polygons, deformations, animations, rendering, and we'll also look at texturing um, in a few videos to come. So there's quite a few in this series. And what I want to do is I actually want to use the extrude tool on a face, right? So I want to choose one of these faces and I want to use that extrude tool. So I'm going to quite easily just hold my right click down. Okay, so we get our little shortcut menu up and I'm going to choose my face and I'm going to select one of these faces. Okay, so one of these faces. So I'm just going to take this face because it's probably the easiest for this video. And I'm going to use the extrude tool. Now, what the extrude tool is going to do, it's actually going to do exactly what I'm doing now. Okay, so what you can see is I'm just using this move tool, selected the face and I'm actually pulling that out. Okay. Now there's a difference between that and the extrude tool. The extrude tool is going to allow us to again select the face. Again, we'll be able to pull it out, but this time it's going to leave another edge. So it's going to create edges around our cube. All right. So once we use that extrude tool, so let's see that happening. So on my tooltip bar here. Okay, so on this dock or whatever you want to call it, toolbar, there's many, many words you can call this. If I click the extrude tool, okay, you'll notice I get a complete different um, layout of navigation. Okay, you'll notice that we have these axes, so you can see I can pull them out. Okay, so I can pull each one of those directions. Okay, so I can pull them out. All right, um, you'll notice I can pull out in the different axes, like so. And what I can also do is I could pull from the center. Okay, so I could pull from the center. What else I can do is if I select one of these boxes on the outer axes, you'll notice that the inner one is now changed from a movement to an actual selection. So if I select that and pull that, you'll notice I can then move on each one of those axes. Okay, so I can now change um, the width, height, and length of that extrusion. Now with the extrusion it's going to select that face area. Every time you use the extrude tool I'll always suggest someone to make sure you lock that into place. 
Now by locking it, by using this little lock key here, it's basically saying, well, put me in the center of that object or that area. Now the current area we've got selected is the face. Now because it's a solid square um, that we can see, it's automatically going to go into the center. Whereas if I had a different shape, for example, a cylinder um, or a, a pyramid or a triangular shape, it doesn't automatically go to the center, which could become a real pain later on. So what I would always suggest is lock it down and then we can pull it out. Now notice it's now created some more faces here. This is pretty much in some people's cases you'd call it subdivision because you're going to subdivide um, your cube into more pieces uh, or into more faces, more edges and more vertexes. But you can only do one set. Okay, So I'll have this extra amount here and obviously my start of my cube, so where I started from. Let's say I want to make some more of these, okay, so some more faces to work with, because there might be an object that I might want to manipulate further on, where I'll have more cuts inside my shape or inside my object. To do that, after I've done my extrusion, if you press the G on the keyboard, so press G on the keyboard, it's basically saying, let me use that tool again. So instead of clicking the extrude tool again, I'm basically just saying repeat that tool. So use the previous tool, which was the extrude tool. I'll lock that down again. And if I pull it out, you'll notice I've now created more faces again with more points I could work with inside the object. Now let's say I want to make this smaller. Okay, so I want to make this area slightly smaller and extrude from that point. Again, I press G on the keyboard. I'm going to lock into place. But this time, I'm going to click on one of these outer squares. So any of these just above the pointers, so your axis pointers. But I want to make sure I go into the center. Because inside the center, I'm going to click and drag inside itself. Okay. So I'm just going to make a small little square like that inside. I'm going to press G again on the keyboard lock and pull out again. So what you can see happening is by just using the extrude tool I can start making an object by just one tool and using the G key. Okay. Again let's say for example I now want to work with this face here. So on this side again if I just click on the extrude tool you'll notice it's slightly moved. If I lock notice it goes in the right direction. Okay so unlock completely the wrong direction. Lock goes in the right direction which I want to use. Okay. Again I can pull that out. Okay, so I can pull that out. And now I could use other tools. So let's say for example I want to use the scale tool. So I could scale it. Okay. G to use my extrude tool again. Lock and pull out. Okay. Again G to lock, I'm oh, sorry, G to redo the tool, lock, and then I could scale again. G to use my tool again, lock, and pull out. Okay, so you can see that by just, again, just using the extrude tool and using these three tools here, you can manipulate the object to quite a large, you know, quite a large amount, and by doing extra features will allow you to, to to, to pretty much create um, an object out of just one polygon shape. Okay? In future tutorials, we're going to learn how to cut these up. So instead of doing all this extrudent cut, we'll be able to cut it by using a simplistic tool, which will slice our cube up. And then again, we can use the extrude tool to work with that. So let's say, again, just to repeat the exercise, if I choose my extrude tool, so I have my face selected, Notice it's the wrong way around. If I lock, okay, I can pull that out. Okay. However, we have a small problem that I didn't select the arrow. I've actually pulled from the center, which we don't want to happen. So we actually want to pull from the arrow. Okay. Hence, all that black came out. That pretty means you're overlapping um, your mesh, which is, becomes a complete pain to, to fix. So we can G lock and pull that out. Scale, 
from the center, G to bring back our extrude tool, and pull that back. Right? So pretty much from a very simplistic cube that we started off with, we've created one crazy shape. Nothing fancy, but just a real um, odd shape by just using one tool, which is our extrude tool, which is just here. Okay, Pressing the G key so we can reactivate the extrude tool. Okay, So we press the G key. But most importantly is once you've extruded, oops, sorry, before you extrude, sorry, I'm making a mistake. Before you extrude, always make sure you lock it down. Right? So always make sure you lock it down. And then whenever you want to make another point, just press G and lock down again. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. It's a very basic tutorial in Extruden. Uh, we will look at um, more advanced features of Extruden um, in future lessons where it comes to um, Extruden things like circular objects, creating piping, and etc. Um, but for now, it's just a basic overview on how you would use the extrude tool to modify a, a pretty simple shape. Again, thank you very much for watching. My name's Wayne. Um, again, this is pretty much made for my students. But if you fellow YouTubers would like to leave any comments, share or, or do what you need to do with these videos, please by all means do that. Again, thank you very much. And hopefully we'll see you again in the next series. Thank you.